Uh, as Rico mentioned, I'm going to talk a little bit today about how, how we interact with the web um, is changing. Um, I'm going to do that just, cause just to start out. I'm going to start out with a super Mr. Obvious slide. Um, and that is that web mobile browsing is exploding. Um, uh, uh, the, the interesting point, though, is that this year there are more people browsing the web with touch than there are using mouse. Um, and the other implication uh, that may not be really apparent is that people are starting to use, are, are using touch on desktop as well. So um, Windows 8 now uh, has uh, touch built in. Um, and um, even you know, platforms like Ubuntu have, have touch integrated into the platform. And so if you have a touch-capable laptop, you can start using the web on, on, on your desktop as well with touch. And so this curve, I expect, or the number of people using the curve, the implication of this curve, um, is that a number of the number of people using touch on the web is only going to accelerate. Um, and uh, so we did a lot of research. And what, what this really this talk is about is uh, the first part is a little bit about the research we did with, with Surface, and the second part is about pointer events. Um, uh, but by, as part of doing the, the building the Surface device, we did a lot of research on what was going on on the web. Um, and I keep hoping I can delete this slide because I think it's, I th and I think probably for most people this is a pretty elite audience. This is pretty obvious, but there's things that stop working when you, when, when you are using the web in a touchable manner, right? Um, so when you, when you hover is, is a terrible thing to use when you have a touchable web. Uh, it, you know, I'm sorry, not hover, but hover, hover menus and things like that. Uh, where the interaction requires that you're able to hover over a device or over a, an element on the, on the page. Uh, when you're using, you're using a, a, the web page in a touch manner, that's impossible. Um, so some patterns like this stop working, and you need to think about that, um, which can sometimes be challenging when you're develop, doing most of your development, obviously, on, on a laptop. Um, so you need to reconsider which methods you're using on the web uh, as you develop for the web for the touch. Um, another thing we did is we did a lot of research on um, what's the optimal tar touch target size? Uh, so we, we um, uh, you know, obviously a mouse has really fine-grained control over, you know, clicking elements on the screen, and obviously touch doesn't. People have uh, fingers of various sizes. And what we discovered is that uh, we, did, we did research that there, was, there were people that had, had fingers that went from 8 millimeters all the way up to um, 19 millimeters with an 11 millimeter average, basically. Um, and what we found is that uh, we, so we used different touch target sizes, and um, we found that uh, as the touch size got below five millimeters, um, people started to make a lot more mistakes. Um, so that seems to be kind of the asymptotic kind of curve in which um, you know, people start to have a lot more trouble using, using your website. Um, and it's not only that they have more trouble clicking the target, they actually spend more time uh, trying to zero in on the target as well. So those two things combine together to be, um, you know, to, to make it very much more difficult. And so what we discovered in that research is that something between seven millimeters and nine millimeters um, is kind of an ideal touch target size. Um, and so that what, what that imp implies kind of depends on the, the density of the screen, but um, from a lot of the common screens right now, that's 40 to 50 pixels. So your touch target should be in that range. Um, going above that, obviously, is, is easier to touch, but then you start using up more uh, screen real estate for your touch targets. Um, so as you design your applications, you should think about you know, people using it for touch and, and making sure that touch targets are the right size. Um, another part that we did, another part of the research we did with uh, the Surface was looking at where touch targets are positioned. Um, and so those of you that are, uh, have, have seen Windows and Windows 8, we have this, this, this kind of um, uh, this pattern where we have things on the left and the right that you can, you can click. And this comes directly out of the research on, on, on where people's hands are. Um, and so the green regions here are um, where it's easy for people with, with the smallest hands to reach touch targets. And as you see, it's kind of over on the, it's in the middle of, of, of the tablet. Um, it's, you know, obviously to the right and the left, usually. Um, and so for the touch targets that you want your users to use the most, these are the best positions for, um, that you should, you, you should have. Um, um, uh, and, you know, as, as things get more to the center of the screen, it'd be more difficult for people to use. Uh, and so when people at Microsoft are thinking about building, building websites and building applications, um, we have this general kind of set of guidelines. Um, and so the first one kind of comes out of the last one. Put your touch targets to the side, um, towards the middle if possible, if it's a static screen or it doesn't scroll. Um, and on the, on, the, on the phone, it's exactly the opposite, right? So you're using your thumb as opposed to fingers. Uh, it's, uh, it's the best interaction zone is actually in the middle. Um, and so then you kind of flip that around when you start thinking about where the best areas are for people to read things on, on, 
um, on mobile devices. For the tablet, it's, it's, it's best up top. Um, their hands aren't obscuring it. Uh, they can, you know, it's, it's easier for them to read. And the same thing on, on the phone as well. Um, and so, you know, people bring expectations now. You know, the, the explosion of apps um, in, in mobile and in desktop has brought expectations of what the, you know, touch, touchable apps mean to the web as well. And one thing that the web really hasn't, you know, to date hasn't kept up with is, is multi-touch. So the ability to have multiple pointer uh, uh, events going on at once. Um, and so this has led us, um, in, 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 in conjunction with Mozilla, who's been a great partner in this proposal, um, to propose to the W3C something called pointer events. Um, and what the idea of pointer events is, is to evolve the current mouse events model um, to unify this across the other types of, of, pointer, or, uh, of pointers that are available. Um, so we're talking about mice, we're talking about touch, we're talking about pens, and things that we, can't, we don't even, you know, haven't even dreamed up yet. Um, uh, uh, so this has moved, uh, this has moved very quickly through the W3C. It was a, a, a working draft in, uh, I think, March of this year, I believe this year. And then in, in, in five months, it's, it went to candidate recommendation. Um, the good news is it's really an L of evolution. Um, so we've taken what you already know from mouse events and essentially um, have, you know, they're more or less drop-in replacements. And there's really only one thing that we've added, and that's pointer cancel. Um, pointer cancel is an event you get when someone changes an orientation or, or um, a couple other scenarios where you want to, uh, or accidental input that has been detected by the device, uh, where you want to cancel the inputs. You want to cancel this particular pointer event. Um, otherwise, it's, it's, it's more or less what you expect these events from, uh, from you know, using mouse events for many, many years. Um, what it does add is it adds more attributes. And I'm going to walk through each of these um, in a little bit more detail. Um, so it adds more uh, the set of attributes that are available on each, uh, each event so that you can, you can do some you know, much more you know, a richer interaction model of, with, uh, with touch and other, other pointer devices. And so the first one is, uh, the first set is, is width and height. And this is the recognition that a lot of um, pointer events beyond the mouse have, or pointer devices beyond the mouse have, a real physical world width and height, right? So when you put your finger down on the screen, depending on how much you, you, you know, you're pressing on it, if you're using your thumb or your, your index finger, it's going to have a different geometry on the screen. And so this passes this through to your web app. Um, so you have access to that, and you can respond appropriately. Um, you know, likewise, uh, for some devices, in, in particular the pen, um, they're, 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 you know, it might be important to have the, the pressure and the tilt that, it's, um, uh, that the, 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 the pointing device is at. This allows you to do kind of stenographic, you know, um, uh, calligraphy style things with the, with the pen. Um, and so you can, you can reflect what the user's real intention was with using the device. Um, uh, and finally, um, there's, there's uh, two other uh, things you can use. Um, uh, so if you, if, you know, most cases you probably want to handle pointer devices the same, but in, you know, if in the case that you don't, you want to handle a pen differently from a touch device or, or a mouse, um, you have the ability with pointer type to, to do um, device specific actions. And then finally, because this now is a model where there can be multiple pointer devices in action at, or in, in, in play at once, um, there's actually an ID, which is kind of the thread ID for that one, that one uh, pointer event, uh, uh, sorry, that one pointer device being used in the system. So you can keep track and you can keep them separate um, as, as, they, uh, um, as, as you're using them. All right, so I'm going to jump out. I'll jump in right now and just show a little bit of code about how this, how this works. Um, and I'm going to have to do that over here. Fortunately, I'm going to have to do this little dance because my screen is not actually high enough resolution to do a 1080 uh, presentation, which is sort of annoying. Um, get a new laptop when I get back. Um, anyway, so, um, uh, so what I'm showing here is essentially I'm going to build a finger painting application. Um, so I'm using a canvas. Um, I'm essentially, there's a little bit of boilerplate down here because um, in IE10, we had a vendor pre prefix implementation of this, and now it's shifted over to the draft recommendation um, uh, uh, events. Um, but I'm essentially, in that canvas, I'm adding a set of event listeners. Uh, so there's, there's an event listener for pointer down, and there's an event listener for pointer move, and up, and cancel, and so on. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, when there's a pointer down, I'm going to start paint. 
And just to, to initialize things, I just have a list of four points. And so what I'm going to do is, is, as I move, I'm going to paint along that path. So I just do a, a Bezier curve between those four points. Um, and we'll just continue to do that as, as, as the user moves. Um, and when I, uh, lift a, when I lift or cancel, meaning an orientation change usually, um, I'll end the paint and, and it'll stop the, um, it, it clears this list essentially. Um, and so if we look at, uh, you know, how does, that, how does that look? How does that work? Um, and I need to go off full screen. Uh, wait, so I have to, this is really annoying, but I have to come over here and actually do the, no, I can, I can do the, so I'll do the, um, so I'll start out with just the mouse. So this is one pointer event, right? Um, and now I'm going to do this little dance over here and use my touch screen on my laptop, which is really annoying, but um, to do the same thing. Um, so I just touched my laptop. It's not really apparent to you in this case. Um, but essentially, I drew on the screen as well. So we used two different pointer types. Um, they reacted in a way that you know, makes sense. It, it did, you know, essentially drew the line, followed the curve that we were talking about. Um, the problem is, and I can't show this in real time, is that if I use both my fingers, um, the way I've implemented it, uh, it doesn't work right. Uh, what happens is it essentially jumps between the pointer events in each of the, um, uh, the streams of events we're getting. And so to, to fix that, essentially, we just need to use the pointer ID that I mentioned um, earlier. So with, with multi-touch, essentially, here's another implementation of that. Um, and essentially, I'm just using now, instead of just having a single list, I maintain a, uh, a list of points that we're going to draw that curve between using, you know, indexed by this pointer ID that you're getting as part of the as part of the pointer event. Um, and otherwise, it's the same implementation. We're drawing the curve through that, that, that set of points. Um, and so uh, if I go back and drag this back over here, and you have to trust me that I'm using two fingers. Oh, I guess you can tell now, because it has different colors. Um, now, now that's handled correctly. Um, and it actually manages those as, as two separate streams of, of points that it's drawing. Um, but you know what's what's interesting about this is it's still the same size, right? So even though I was, I was using a, I have pretty big fingers, um, uh, globally big fingers, uh, and but it was still kind of a, a you know a small kind of you know pointer sized or a mouse sized uh, thing, and that's because I'm not using the the physical geometry of that particular pointer device. Um, and so uh, looking at this, you know, just one final tweak I'm gonna I can make to this is I can actually. Um, here I can just say, you know, I just use some sort of heuristic where I add the width and the height of the pointer device and multiply them times three, or, or use the pressure, or just use, you know, use some kind of default. Um, and doing that, it allows us to have a real world, um, uh, you know, have, have some real world element to it. So on the mouse, you still get the kind of the narrow line, but if I, uh, if I use my finger, my giant, my giant thumb in this case, you know, we get a giant line that looks, you know, appropriately matches my giant thumb. So, um, so that's just a quick example. Um, so all of that is up on, you know, it, uh, when you jump into using pointer events, all of that is up on GitHub. Jump back to the presentation. Um, so that's, I, I have that, that's a, those three examples up on, 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 on GitHub if you want to have a look at them. Um, and, you know, in terms of getting started, uh, so IE10 had vendor prefix support that I, I talked about briefly. IE11 now has the unprefix support based on the draft recommendation. Um, there's a Chromium WebKit prototype um, at this, uh, this shortened URL. Um, but for most of us, we're probably, you know, for the immediate future, we're going to need to use, uh, use polyfills. So um, there's two uh, polyfills available. One's written by a Microsoft or um, HandJS. Uh, it's available there. And then Google, a Googler has actually uh, written a, a polyfill as well called points.js. Um, so uh, uh, you can get started today. Those work roughly, obviously without native support. There, there's, there's some approximation to it because they're, they're interpreting mouse events in order to kind of build up the same model. Um, but you know, to, to a first approximation, they work pretty well. Um, and, it, and if it, it is supported natively on the platform, it uses that in both those polyfills. Um, so that's what I had. Um, I'd love, you know, I'm happy to take any questions about pointer events. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening to me again. Does anyone have any questions for Tim? Oh, we have one question over here. Um, so did you say that these new events are going to become 
um, part of the specification? Yeah, so the, the, they're, they're a draft recommendation in, in the W3C. Um, someone, could, someone else could probably answer better what that exactly means, but at, at that point, I, it's usually, you know, my understanding is that means that it's something that, that people are, are going to implement. And so, the, for instance, in the Blink project, there's an intention to implement. I think that's the right term. Um, so it should be, should be landing in Chrome. Obviously, Mozilla co-sponsored or co-proposed it f with us, so I'd, I'd expect that it lands in Firefox at um, some near future. Okay, and will these work um, uh, existing with Touch Start and those ones as well? On the, I'm sorry, the what? Um, will they work alongside the Touch Start and Touch End and all those events? Oh, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. It's, it's completely parallel. parallel yep. Cool. Okay, anyone else with questions? More? Yeah, in the back, we have one. Aren't there, uh, aren't there any proposals for um, natively supporting uh, multi-touch events like uh, pinch and uh, you know, uh, rotate, uh, drag, stuff like that? So that so gestures are not in the spec. That was that was that was something that they talked about, but didn't didn't make it into this into this particular spec. I think that was that, that was the question that we're not uh, gestures are going to be part of the uh, pointer events. We, there's no there's no default. There's no pinch or or. or um, uh, kind of higher level gestures, just, just the raw events that you get back. That was something that was discussed during the standardization process. We didn't get it.